you get the feeling there's something special about this house the first time you see it. It's white, two-story, made of wood, and stands on the lonely prairie overlooking the quiet waters of the lake. Meadowlarks warble near the neat white picket fence. From the home's frontier look, you sense someone pretty important must have lived here. For it's quite a ranch. The man who was born here nearly a century ago became Oklahoma's most famous personality. He was perhaps better known to most Americans than were many presidents who also enjoyed his wit. Look closely at the portraits on the walls, and you'll realize you are visiting the birthplace of the famed cowboy actor Will Rogers, just one of the many exciting places that let you know... Stay close this year. Visit Green Country for free tour guide. Write Green Country, Box P, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Yes, we know it's dark in here. But you won't need any light to experience the terrors we have in store for you. Just keep your ears open and your imagination at work. And even in the dark, you will see such miracles as you've never known before. Yes, we said miracles because our tale concerns the miraculous. When you meet Mr. Ross... He may seem like a most unlikely person to be a miracle worker, but the gods make strange choices sometimes. And in the case of Salvador Ross, they gave him the ability to make choices of a most unusual nature. I want to make a deal, Mr. Halpert. Only it's going to sound crazy, so don't throw me out right away. You know how old I am? What the heck are you talking about, kid? I'm 26. How old are you? Now listen, are you crazy or something? Uh, well, okay. I'm 79. If the price is right, I'll trade you my 26 for what you are. I can do it, Mr. Halpert. Just say the word. <laughs> mystery drama, A Bargain in Blood, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal and new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Hi, I'm Goldilocks, Ms. Goldilocks, if you please, and I'm a professional taste tester. Here at my taste test laboratory, that's TTL for short, (laughs) I taste test everything from porridge to diet drinks. Actually, there's not that much taste testing in porridge these days. There used to be once upon a time. I mean, that's how this Miz got into the biz. (laughs) But lately, it's been diet drinks. I mean, with so many diet drinks going sugar-free, I've been really busy conducting taste tests. A rather unbearable assignment, to be sure. But then I discovered sugar-free diet 7-Up. Fresh, natural, delicious. My only problem is that sugar-free diet 7-Up tastes so good that it broke my Goldilocks diet drink taste meter Well, sugar-free diet 7-Up certainly has my seal of approval. This one's just right. Hello, I'm Roger Miller for Gabriel Striders. If you're going to make it big in the entertainment world, you'd better have something special to offer the public. And I guess the same holds true when you're selling a product. One thing I know for sure, Gabriel has something really special in their Striders shock absorbers. With most ordinary shocks, you're stuck with the ride they give you. But with Gabriel Striders, you can choose the ride you want. Because heavy-duty Striders can be custom-tuned for your car's suspension system and custom-tuned for your kind of driving. Regular, firm, or extra firm. 
You can set Striders or have your servicemen set them for your suspension, for the way you drive. If you need shock absorbers, adjustable Striders will give you the control and stability you need. Gabriel Striders. King of the road. promised you a story about miracles. This one begins with one of the oldest miracles in nature, the miracle of love. In a not-so-quiet booth at the Neptune Seafood Restaurant, we see a young couple. The boy is Salvador Ross. The girl is named Ruthie Maitland. And Sal is looking into her lovely brown eyes, searching for an answer to the most important question he has ever asked anyone. Please, Sal, let's not talk about it here. This is no place to talk about it. Why not? I mean, what's the difference where we talk? You always say the same thing anyway. Well, I'm just not sure how I feel. That's all it is. Ah, uh, you mean you are sure? You still think I'm a no-good bum won't amount to anything? I never said anything like that. Yeah, but your old man has said it to you, hasn't he? Oh, please. Let's leave him out of it. He's the real reason you won't marry me. I mean, he thinks I'm not good enough for you. Sal, people can hear us. Look, Ruthie, maybe he's right. You know, maybe I'm not good enough for you. At least that's the way he sees things. I don't have your education. I never read all the books you read. You just don't understand about my father. He's been a teacher all his life. Books and music and art. They're the most important things in the world to him. But that doesn't mean they are to me. Yeah, but he's important to you, isn't he? Yes. I love my father. I, I, I love him very much. And now that he's sick, I... I have to spend a lot of time with him. Sure, yeah. Time for him to tell you what a rotten boyfriend you picked for yourself. Oh, Sal. Factory bum who can't earn more than a hundred bucks take home a week. But don't you think money's important, Sal? When people get married, money means something. Yeah, what if I had money, huh? I mean, would that make the difference? I mean, would you say yes, oh, then? Oh, Sal, please. Let's just finish our meal in peace. Look, I'm not touching another bite until I get some kind of answer from you, Ruthie. <sighs> If you insist on an answer, maybe I'd better give you one. I'm sorry, but it's no. I won't marry you. Hey, you, Ross. What are you doing up here in a catwalk? Me? Nothing. Since when do we pay you for doing not? I'm just digesting my sandwich, for Pete's sake. Can't a guy take five minutes after lunch to digest his food? Lunch hour was over a long time ago. Get back to the machine. All right, all right. Stop shoving me, you ape. Who are you calling an ape? I'm your boss, remember? If you don't want to get that nose of yours busted twice, you better start down them steps. Before I count three. Listen, pal, a better man than you busted my nose the first time around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard about your big prize fighting career, Ross. What was it, one fight? Paperweight division? Go on, move. Get your hands off me. Hey, hey, look out. I'm falling. Hey, hey kid. You going to sleep all day or what? Huh? What do you say? <coughs> Ever since you came into the hospital, all you do is sleep. You could talk to your roommate once in a while. And... I got nothing to talk about. <coughs> how's, how's the busted leg? It's busted, that's all. Well, that's nothing to cry about. Not at your age. <laughs> you take a... <coughs> Take a chest like mine. That's something to cry about. You got a cold. Big deal. What cold? I got pneumonia. Double, triple. Who knows? I'm... I'm lucky I live to see another day. You'll live, Pop. Listen. I'll trade you that broken leg anytime. You just ask me. <laughs> All right. I'll make you a deal. You give me that little cold of yours, you can have my broken leg. Eh? You see how you like it, Pop. <laughs> you, you think I'm kidding? I do it in a minute. Okay. Okay, it's a trade. My broken leg for your pneumonia. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, what's the matter with you this morning, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess I caught you cold or something. What are you talking about? I never came near you. <laughs> well, I got it just the same. <laughs> hey, 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 Doc, come in here a minute, huh? Calling me, Mr. Levin. Yeah, yeah. Come in and have a look at my buddy here. He says he's got my pneumonia. I doubt that very much. <laughs> I got something all right. Besides, I ain't infectious now, right, Doc? You said I was getting better. You know, come to think of it, I feel better. <laughs> Good for you. No kidding. I feel fine. Like I can get up from this bed. You know, I... What's the matter, Mr. Levin? My leg. My leg. What's wrong? It, it hurts. Boy, I, I can't hardly move it. I, I think my leg's broken. That's impossible. Oh, it hurts. It hurts something awful. Help me. All right. All right, I'll have I'll have a look at it. No! Careful! Don't move me! Go! Mm. It fractured all right. You must have fallen out of bed last night. I didn't fall. You think I wouldn't remember falling out of bed? Sometimes the sedation plays tricks on the mind. Mr. Ross. <coughs> yeah, what? Do you know if Mr. Levin fell out of bed last night? His leg is broken. <coughs> no, I didn't hear him fall. <coughs> hey... You really mean that? About his leg? That's how it looks to me. And I'd better see about getting that leg in splints right away. Don't move, Mr. Levin. I'll send the nurse in. Oh. How could this happen to me? How? What did I do to deserve this? Hey, Pop. <coughs> you remember our bargain? What? Your pneumonia. <coughs> Your pneumonia for my busted leg. Are you crazy or something? I wonder if my leg is... Hey, doesn't hurt anymore. It feels okay. I'm locked up with a crazy man. I'm telling you, it's true. I got your rotten pneumonia. But you got my broken leg. Who's there? Salvador Ross, Mr. Maitland. What do you want? I came to see Ruthie. Ruthie isn't home. Could you tell me where she is? Wait a minute. Where have you been lately, Salvador? I haven't seen you around. Yeah. I guess you haven't minded that much, huh, Mr. Malin? Ruthie told me you two had broken up. Yeah, I got pretty broken up myself. I fell on a job, busted my leg. I've been in a hospital the past three weeks. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, there were uh, complications, like I, uh, like I got pneumonia. Hmm. It's too bad. I'll tell Ruthie you called. Just tell her I was here, huh? Tell her I was sick, but I'm okay now. Uh, tell her I'll call her soon. All right. I'll give her the message. And uh, you could also tell her that I, uh, I quit my job. I'm going to look for something better. Yes, Salvador, you do that. You look for something better. We should all try to improve ourselves. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do, Mr. Maitland. You wait and see. I'm going to improve myself. You sure you want another drink, Sal? I'm sure, Phil. Just put it right in front of me. Why don't you disappear? Uh, you don't usually have three of those. That's because usually I can't afford it. Oh, now you can, huh? That's right. Well, I'll come. I mean, if you quit your job, like you said. I got compensation from the plant, you know, for getting hurt on the job. Oh, no kidding. So uh, now you're rich, huh? Rich. I got about ten bucks left. All the rest went for expenses while I wasn't working. But at least I get something for my ten bucks. Well, here's what you get, Sal. Two bucks change. Boy, I wish I had what's in that register, Phil. Uh, listen, kid, be thankful for what you got. Yeah? Like what? Ah, well, you got hair. Huh, that's more than I got. You want the hair? Take it. Yeah, listen, I wish I could, Sal. I really wish I could. I mean, when I was your age, I had me a head of hair could knock your eyes out. Would you really like my hair? Uh, you know what they say, grass don't grow on a busy street. But just the same, I sure wish I had some. Yeah, maybe you can. I mean, there are all kinds of ways, you know. Oh, you mean like, uh, what are you, a transplant? Yeah, yeah, in a way. I'll transplant my hair to your head. How's that, huh? huh? Not for free, of course. Oh, okay, what's the joke? Oh, you, you know what happened to me in a hospital? I traded an old guy for his pneumonia. How's that? It's true. He got my broken leg. I got his pneumonia. What do you think of that? Give me all the money you got in the register. You can have all my hair. 
<laughs> sure, Sal, anything you say. Only not tonight, huh? I'm busy. Look, you won't have anything to lose. You don't even have to pay me until afterwards. Oh, I get it now. You get yourself a haircut and then hand me the stuff in a cigar box. No, that's not how it works. Phil, look, I'm not sure how it works, but let's wait and see, huh? You Will you shake on it? Okay, Sal. Shake. What are you talking about? Look, Phil, I kind of had that weighs about 2,000 pounds thanks to you, no? Oh, listen, from now on, the drinks are on the house. You come in any time, I'll set them up for you. Wait a minute. We made a deal last night, didn't we? Oh, I thought you were kidding. How could I believe in something like that? I got hair, Sal. I got hair all over my head. I can comb it, brush it, cut it. I can run my fingers through it. Uh, that's what Evelyn's been doing all morning, my wife. She can't take her hands off me. Hair? You've got hair. It's just like yours, Sal. Exactly like yours. Black and bushy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A mirror. I gotta see a mirror. It's true. Oh, my God. It's really happened. I'm bald. Oh, Sal? Hey, Sal, where are you? What did I do? I don't have my hair anymore. I'm as bald as a cue ball. Hey, Sal, why are you coming in for your money? I owe you about 110 bucks, Sal. Come in for your money. So there is a cure for baldness. However, you have to have the good fortune to know young Salvador Ross. Although young Salvador Ross looks a bit older now. He may regret his bargain now, but who knows what the future will bring. Because now that he knows he has a talent for trading, perhaps Mr. Ross can trade his way into a better, brighter future. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your allergy to contact. Listen carefully, because this message may surprise you. There is an ingredient that can effectively help block pollen's bad effect on your system. Sneezing, sniffling, drips, itchy, red, watery eyes. It's the antihistamine most prescribed by allergy specialists. And it's an ingredient in contact. Surprising, yes, but the true wonder of contact is how our tiny time pills keep this antihistamine working. Helping up to 12 hours per capsule. All day, all night. Allergy is our business, too. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your allergy to contact. Take contact only when needed. Only as directed. day at the store, dear. Just let me sit down for a minute. Oh. Same old story, huh? Rustolium. All day long. They just kept coming in, wanting to buy Rustolium. Oh. Big cans, little cans, spray cans, all the colors. Then there was a I know, it's not fair. Don't they know it's Tuesday and I can't sell Rustolium on Tuesday? Only on weekends, Rustolium people say. Touch up time, they say. I tell you, Moss. Now, easy, Bert. I know Rustolium protects most everything that's metal. I know Rustolium stops that rust. I know. Bert, th- you wake the children. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, what'd you do today? Well, I noticed the lawn furniture was getting rusty, so I touched it up a little and. Uh... Touched it up with what, Maud? Um. Uh, eat your dinner, dear. I fixed your favorite pot roast. Uh, roast. <laughs> Our story resumes in still another friendly neighborhood tavern. Not the Four Leaf Clover. Salvador Ross hasn't chosen to return to the four-leaf clover, not since the night when he made the incredible transaction with Phil, the bartender. 
The thought of visiting his own head of hair was far too repugnant for Sal Ross. Or perhaps it was because he realized how cheaply he had sold part of himself. A hundred and ten dollars. As he sits and broods into the bar mirror, looking at the gleaming reflection of his naked scalp, he cursed his own haste and plotted his next step. After all, it takes time and experience to become an experienced trader. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You spare a guy half a buck? I'll beat it, will you? Just for a bowl of soup, you know? A bowl of soup, huh? I don't know this joint served any soup. Well, I wasn't going to have it here. It was going down the street. Come on, don't be cheap, huh? Beat it, I said. All right, all right. You don't have to get nasty. With hey, hey, hey. Wait a minute. What? Come back here a minute. I want to talk to you. Yeah, what about it? That's a pretty good uh, head of hair you got there, Pop. What? I said... I said it's a nice head of hair you got there for a man your age. What are you, some kind of pansy or something? <laughs> hey, listen. How'd you like to have a drink, huh? <laughs> you kidding me? Hey, bartender. Give me two more of these, huh? I'm drinking scotch, Pop. Is that all right with you? Sure, anything. I'm not particular. I didn't think you would be. Yeah. That's a real nice thick head of hair, Pop. It's kind of... Gray, but I guess you could dye it, couldn't you? Listen, anything you say, friend. You see a bald head of mine? Yeah, yeah, what about that? Hey, you wouldn't believe it, Pop, but I had a full head of hair myself not more than two weeks ago. What? Oh, here's your drink, Pop. Knock it down, huh? Oh, yeah. Ah, boy, that tastes good. Yeah, only it disappeared awful fast, did it? I guess you'd like another one, huh? Well, if it's okay with you. <laughs> I tell you what, Pop. How'd you like to have a half a dozen bottles of that stuff, all your own? What? You heard me. How'd you like to have a half a dozen bottles for yourself? I mean, you can have yourself a blast. That ought to last you a whole week, maybe. Where would I get a half a dozen bottles? From where? Maybe I'll make you a present of them. Why would you do that? Well, let's say maybe i make you trade. Look, mister, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll make a deal with you. Your hair for my whiskey... You know, I think you're nuts. Who ever heard of a deal like that? You just heard of it, Pop. And I show you my good faith to take you out right now and I'll buy you those bottles. All you gotta say is yes. Anyway, it's 3.30. I was going to stay awake and see what happens to... Oh, my... Oh, my God! My hair! My hair is back! It's back! I got, I got to look in the mirror. Oh, she's... It's true. It's true. My hair's all grown back. Only it's not my old hair. It, it can't be. It's white. It's... It's greasy. It's the bums. That's what it is. I got the bums here. He's got my whiskey. It really works. He's bald and I'm drunk. And I got hair. And I'm broke. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of, but it's true. I can swap what I got for anything. Anything at all. Only what have I got to sell? What can I give up to really get some real bread? Yeah. Yeah, I know what it is. Jeez, I got the most important thing in the world. In the whole world. It ought to be worth a fortune to the right party. It ought to be worth a million bucks. Yeah, that's right, Sal. I'm still looking for the old guy. Come on, you want a game or don't you? Not yet, Joey, not yet. Tell me more about the job. Nothing much to tell. I drive Mr. Halpert's car. Sometimes I clean his apartment. Sometimes I tend bar for him when he gives parties. Only, uh, lately he ain't been giving too many parties. He's getting too old for that kind of stuff. How old is he, Joey? Mm, I don't know. He don't tell me stuff like that. But he's old. I gotta help him in and out of the limousine all the time. He's rich, ain't he? Sure he's rich. He's plenty rich. Joey, you... Look, would you introduce me to your boss? Hmm? I want to meet Mr. Halpert. Could you arrange that? What for? He ain't hiring nobody else. 
Hey, what are you after? My job? Forget it. Come on. Let's shoot some pool. Ah, uh, you don't really want to play pool with me, Joey. You know, I'm ten times better than you are. I cream you. <laughs> yeah, I know you're the shark of all time. But come on and play just the same. I want to meet Mr. Halpert, Joey. I got a proposition for him, see? Something that'll interest him a whole lot. Forget it, Sal. He don't see people. He hardly ever leaves the apartment nowadays. It's important. It's very important. Ah, come on, Sal. He's not going to talk business with somebody like you. Big bankers and people like that are trying to see him all the time. He won't even talk to them. Listen, Joey, look. You get me in to see Mr. Halpert, I'll give you something for your trouble. Like what? I got no money. But I'll give you something else. You can have my game, Joey. You what? I swap you my pool game for a meeting with your boss. I mean it. You say the word, you can play as good as me. You mean like you'll coach me? I don't have to. You don't... Look, you'll play as good as me, that's all. I can do things like that. I can't explain how, but I can. Just say yes, Joey. That's all you gotta say. And if you start shooting real good, look, will you get me in a scene, Mr. Halford? Are you, Joey? I'm still down at the pool parlor. Sal, will you listen to what happened? I just took on Marty Shapiro. And I beat him. First time in my life I ever beat Marty in a pool game. I told you it would happen. Listen, listen. The score was 125 to 50. That's how much I beat him by. And wait till you hear this. I took on Grimsky himself. The guy who owns the place, you know? He bet me 100 bucks. I couldn't do it again. And I did. I beat him, Sal. You got my game, Joey. I told you. You got what I used to have. But now, look, you owe me a favor, too. All right, what's this all about? Uh, uh, this is the guy I told you about, Mr. Hoppert. The guy with the, uh, treatment. Huh? Uh, you don't look like any doctor to me. I'm not a doctor, Mr. Alpert. I mean, uh, not exactly. Now, what the heck does that mean, not exactly? Look, uh, can we talk in private? Yeah, I'll go uh, polish the car, Mr. Halpert. Ah, oh, polish the car. Polish the car, that's all you ever want to do. You got to wear that car out one of these days. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back in a little while, Mr. All right, all right. Get down to it. Now, what do you want exactly? I want, I want, to, make a, I want to make a deal with you, Mr. Halpert. Only it's going to sound crazy, so don't throw me out right away, see? You know how old I am? Oh, what the heck are you talking about, kid? I'm 26. How old are you? Listen, are you crazy or something? Uh, okay. I'm 79. If the price is right, I'll trade you my 26 for what you are. I can do it, Mr. Halpert. Just say the word. <laughs> if that isn't the dumbest thing anybody ever said to me, what nut house did you escape from anyway? Nobody can trade how old they are. I can. I can trade anything I want. You see this head of hair? Yeah. What's a young guy like you doing with all white hair? I swapped for it, Mr. Halpert. I can swap anything I got for anything you've got. And what you got is plenty of money. Uh, and years, kid. Too many years. I'll take them off your back. You just say yes. That's all you have to do. Okay. That's enough. Beat it. Look, you gotta believe me, Mr. Halpert. Give me a chance to prove it. You don't have to pay me off until it works. I mean, what would you give to be 26 years old again? <laughs> a million bucks, kid. That's what I'd give. What kind of pills are you peddling? Would you give me a million bucks? Just like that? Just say yes, Mr. Halpert. The rest is easy. Only don't try double-crossing me, because once we make the swap, it's final. I get the million, you get to be 26. Is that a deal? Yeah. Sure, kid. Sure. It's a deal. Here you are, Mr. Ross. Best suite in the hotel. Uh, wait a minute while I turn on the lights. And uh, this here's your air conditioning unit, Mr. Ross. You can adjust it for any temperature you want. Uh, Mr. Ross, you okay? Uh, yes. 
Yes, I'm all right. I'm just... I'm just a little bit tired. Well, you just sit right down here, Mr. Ross. I'll, I'll put your bags away. Uh, wait a minute. There's uh, something... Uh, something I want you to do for me first. Oh, yes, sir? Uh, I want you to... Read me this story in tonight's paper. I can't see the small print. What's it say there about this man, uh... Halpert? Well, let's see now. It says here... Wayne Halpert disappearance sends company stock tumbling... The mysterious disappearance of retired multimillionaire Wayne Halpert, 79, has caused investors to shed large amounts of the shares in W. Halpert Enterprises. <laughs> I, I was smart to take mine in cash. Yeah, I got it all in cash. What, what was that, Mr. Ross? I know where he is, you know. He's on that yacht of his, sailing down the Mediterranean with all those pretty girls aboard. Look, Mr. Ross, maybe you better get to bed. Yeah, 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 I'm very tired. You're a kind young man. What'd you say your name was? Uh, Albert, sir. Yes, Albert. You're a very kind young man. How old are you, Albert? Uh, 19, sir. You're 19, only 19, huh? Well, you got your whole life in front of you, haven't you, Albert? Oh, yes, sir, I guess so. How much you earn in this hotel, Albert? Well, not too much, sir, including tips about... Mm, $75 a week. How long do you think it would take you to save a thousand bucks, Albert? Me? <laughs> About 20 years. What would you give to have a thousand bucks in your pocket right now, Albert? Are you kidding? You're only 19 years old. But what if you were 20, huh? Would that bother you a lot? Of course not. 19, 20? What's the difference? It was just one year. That's all, Albert. One year. Did you make a deal like that? You swap one year for a thousand bucks. Oh, boy, would I? <laughs> it's good, Albert. That's good. Then I'm going to write you a check right now. Hey, you really mean it, Mr. Ross? That's right, Albert. Anytime you want to sell more years, you come see me. Huh? You can tell your friends about it, too. I'm always good for ready cash. <laughs> Salvador Ross has started to buy back the years he gave away. Tomorrow morning, he'll be 78 years old. He'll probably celebrate with an unbirthday party. Wouldn't we all like to have that privilege? To lose the weight of our years instead of adding them on. Or is it such a privilege? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act 3. It's safe to assume that some of you are listening to my voice from the inside of the wrong car. Not the wrong make, uh, the wrong size. It's especially important these days that the cars we drive fit the way we use them. Now look around. If you've got more room than you've got passengers, maybe a smaller car would be better. If you've got wall-to-wall -wall people, maybe the car is not big enough for the way you use it. And if you've taken the big car and left the small one for your wife to use for her carpools and shopping and Cub Scouts and whatever, well, we've got a message for you. If she hasn't given it to you already, make sure your car fits your lifestyle. Sometimes small is right. Sometimes big is right. Buick makes both right. From Opal to Electra 225, Buick as a car for the way you drive. If you're a busy part-time farmer, you should be aware of the sincere interest the Federal Land Bank has in providing a loan for your type operation. That's right. The Land Bank is interested in helping part-time farmers by providing the kind of loan service this special group requires. Part-time farmers come to the Land Bank for a loan to buy that first piece of land and to buy additional land. They come to the Land Bank for a loan to make major improvements on farm property. A land bank loan helps the part-time farmer become more efficient. A land bank loan is available for such things as building a new home. In fact, a land bank loan is available for just about any purpose that requires long-term financing. So if you're serious about part-time farming, come to the land bank for a long-term loan at reasonable cost. Write to the Federal Land Bank of Houston, Post Office Box 2649, or see your local Federal Land Bank Association.
It's been almost two months since Salvador Ross moved into a luxurious suite in the city's most elegant hotel. And Mr. Ross has been a very busy man. Day after day, a stream of young people has come to his door to make an astonishing transaction. One by one, Salvador Ross has regained the years he gave away. Until finally, at a price of only $53,000, Sal was able to look in the mirror and see the young man he used to be. But now, there was a great difference. Because the young man who looked back at him was a very rich young man. And when he paid his next visit to the home of Ruthie Maitland, he drove to her residence in the back of a chauffeur-driven limousine. Who is it? It's Salvador Ross, Mr. Maitland. Well, what do you know? Back from the dead, Salvador. Like me, hmm? How are you, Mr. Maitland? It's been a long time. You can see how I am, Salvador. You see the wheelchair, don't you? Your eyes are still good, aren't they? Yes, sir. My eyes are all right. That's more than I can say for myself. You've been sick, Mr. Maitland? I've been sick. I've been hit by lightning in the brain. Pardon? They call it a stroke, Salvador. You see, I can't move this side of my body. I'm really sorry, Mr. Maitland. Uh, is Ruthie here? Yes, Ruthie is here. Poor Ruth is always here. Ruthie, come out. You've got company. Where's it, Pop? Come see for yourself. Mr. Maitland, I uh, just want you to know that things are different with me since I saw you last. Things are a lot better. I'm glad for you, Salvador. You told me to go out and prove myself, and uh, that's what I did. Sal. Hello, Ruthie. Sal. Oh, for, for heaven's sake, I haven't heard from you in months. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been busy, you know. A lot of things have been happening to me. That's the way life is, Salvador. Things happen to people. Some good, some bad. Uh, Ruthie, you think you could, uh, come out with me for a little while, huh? Could I take you to dinner or something? Oh, I... I don't think so, Sal. My daughter doesn't like to leave me alone. She thinks she has to watch over me night and day. Oh, come on, please, Ruthie, just for a little while, huh? I gotta talk to you. I got a car downstairs. A car? Yeah, yeah, a car and a driver. So we could just, uh, go for a ride. <laughs> understand how it could have happened, Sal. I mean, you had nothing just a few months ago. You know, everything's so different. I just hit it big, Ruthie. I got lucky. You're not doing anything dishonest. No, no, I swear I'm not. I just, mm. uh, you know, I come into some big money, that's all. An old man. He left me a lot, a lot of money. Someone I did a favor for. But it's all so incredible. And you look so different. Even your face looks different. <laughs> it's a nose, Ruthie. That old broken nose of mine is gone. I swapped it for... I mean, uh... had it fixed. I... I don't know what to say. I... I just overwhelmed. Well, say you see me again, Ruthie. That's all I want to hear. <sighs> I mean, I know you turned me down when I asked you to marry me, but, uh... At least see me again, huh? Well... Oh, yeah, of course. Only it, it can't be too often that... He saw my poor father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too bad about what happened to him. He's so terribly ill, Sal. He needs me. Yeah, I need you too, Ruthie. I never thought I'd ever see the inside of this restaurant, Sal. Yeah, it's a lot different from the old seafood house, ain't it? <laughs> the most fabulous place I've ever been to in my life. Well, there are lots of other places you can see, Ruthie. I mean, not just here. I mean, places in Europe and South America. Hey, hey, you know where I'd like to go? Mm. Acapulco. Everybody talks about Acapulco. <laughs> hey, I, you know, Sal, I, I'm sure dressed all wrong for this restaurant. Just look at the clothes the women are wearing. Now you can have all the fancy clothes you want. And jewelry, Ruthie. <laughs> you know how many times I want to buy you a real good piece of jewelry, but I, I could never afford it. <laughs> this is like a dream. Look at this, Ruthie. What is it? <gasps> you, you ever see a prettier diamond than that in your whole <gasps> life, huh? Oh, it's incredible. Why, it must be 10 carats. That's the biggest rock they had in the whole joint. <gasps> I hate to tell you what it cost. Hey, here, put it on. Huh? Oh, Sally. 
I can't accept this. Oh, sure you can. Go on, put it on your finger. No, no, I, I just can't. It's much too much for me. Yeah, but it's not too much for me. That's all that matters. Ruthie, look, I'm asking you to wear this uh, as an engagement ring. I guess that's what I meant. Huh? Well, I... I never said I'd marry you, Sal. What are you talking about? We've been... Well, you've been dating me for weeks now. Yeah, but we never discussed marriage again. Look, uh... The only reason you turned me down before was because I was such a bum. Well, I... I'm no bum anymore, Ruthie. Can't you see that with your own eyes? I, I just can't do it. But why not? I mean, I... Look, I can be anything you want me to be. You want me to be smart like your old man? I can be that, too. Sal, you know I don't feel that way. Look, I could get an education, see? Just like that. I could learn all there is to know about uh, music and uh, painting and art. You just say the word. I'll go out and get the education. It isn't that alone. Well, then what is it? Hey, wait a minute. Ah, you don't have to tell me. It's your old... It's your old man. It's your father. He still doesn't like me. Well, he... He still doesn't... appreciate you, Sal. Even though I'm rich now, huh? But he doesn't think about money the way you do. He told me to go out and prove myself. That's what I did. It isn't enough for him. Please. We can't talk about it anymore tonight, huh? Well, we... We are gonna talk about it. I mean, once and for all. I know your father means a lot to you, and... You think he's the greatest man who ever lived? Well, I want to know why, see? I want to know what makes him so much better than me. Well, it's hard to explain. Well, try. Well, it's not just that my father is a smart or educated man. He, he has something more important. Yeah, something I don't have, right? Go on, tell me what it is. I don't know the word for it. Well, I'll make up a word. Well, he... He has... Heart. Compassion. I, I I guess that's what I really mean, Sal. My father has compassion. Compassion? All my life, ever since I can remember, he's had that quality. I don't think I could ever live without it around me, Sal. Can you understand that? <laughs> Yes, who is it? Sal Ross, Mr. Maitland. Can I come in? Ruthie's not home. I know, Mr. Maitland. I want to see you. Why me, Salvador? I want to talk to you about something. All right, come in. I don't have very much to say to you, Salvador. You found that out a long time ago. Yeah, I know that. In case you came here to argue with me about Ruthie, don't waste your time. My daughter makes up her own mind. And she told you I proposed to her, huh? She tells me things, yes. You tell her a few things, too, don't you? Salvador. Salvador. I'm a sick man. And I don't have long in this earth. A few months, maybe only a few weeks. I wouldn't want to leave my Ruthie in the hands of the wrong person. You're meaning me, huh? Leave us in peace, Salvador. I didn't come here to talk about Ruthie, Mr. Maitland. Then why did you come? It's you I, I came about. I mean, I came to talk to you. Look, I I know what you think of me, and I didn't come here to change your mind. I came here to talk business. Business? I want to make a deal with you. I want to buy something you got. <laughs> Look at me. I have nothing. Even this wheelchair is rented. you still got something I want. I'm willing to pay for it. Any price you name. You could use money. I know that. Not for yourself, not... I mean, money for Ruthie. Money to take care of her when she's alone. I have nothing to sell, don't you understand? Yes, you do. You got something I need real bad. I don't know what you call it exactly. Ruthie says it's like, uh... Compassion. What kind of crazy talk is this? Do you even know what you're talking about? A lot of people thought I was crazy when I offered them this kind of a deal, but I've done all right. I take my word for it. I've done great. You think you can buy a thing like that? And pay for it like eggs? I know I can. All you do is say yes. I'll give you any amount of money you want. I think maybe you don't feel well, Salvador. Look, a hundred thousand bucks, huh? How does that strike you? Would you make a deal for a hundred thousand? You're really serious. I'll bring you the check tomorrow morning. It's enough money to take care of you for the rest of your life. And Ruthie, too. You know you're a crazy man, Salvador. Crazy. But all right. If that's your insanity, 
All right. I set the alarm so early for. Uh, may as well give up. She says a funny dream last night. I was, I was crying about something. Funny. Crying in your sleep? Hey, look at that. I still got tears in my face. Jeez, I don't think I've cried since I was six years old. I feel so different today. What's the matter with me? I don't feel like myself. I feel like I want... I feel like I want to go outside. I want to look at people. I want to talk to them. <laughs> hey, what a nutty thing. I I want to be with people. Uh... Hey, what is this? Is... is this what Ruthie was talking about? That compassion stuff? Oh, what's so great about it? All I feel is sad. I feel like... I feel like crying. I feel like the whole world is on my shoulders. What's so great about feeling like that, huh? Ruthie. I gotta see Ruthie. I gotta tell her what happened to me. I gotta hold her in my arms. My sweet little Ruthie. Mr. Maitland. Come in. Did you bring the check? Yes, sir. I brought it. All right. Let's get it over with. Is it certified? Yeah, it's a bank check, Mr. Maitland. It's uh, good as cash. Put it on the table. Yes, sir. Uh, is Ruthie up yet? She's up, but she's not here. Oh, well, where is she? I sent her on an errand. Oh, I'd really like to see her, Mr. Maitland. Uh... <laughs> I guess what I really mean is uh, I'd like her to see me, you know, and I'd like her to realize that I've changed. Mm -hmm. You've changed, have you? Yeah, she'll be able to tell, too, you know. It may take her a little while, but she's going to know. I see. And then she'll say yes to your marriage proposal, hmm? Well, I, I think she will, yeah. And I'll, I'll make her happy, Mr. Maitland. I swear I will. I'll, I'll do everything I can to make your daughter happy. You're still a bum, Salvador. Maybe you're rich now, and maybe you've got a big smile on your face, but in my eyes, you're still a bum. I, I know why you feel that way about me, Mr. Maitland. I know, but everything about me is different now. I swear that. And I want us to be friends. You gave me $100,000, Salvador. Do you need my friendship, too? Well, it's what I want more than the money. Sorry, Salvador. I don't have any friendly feelings to give you. This is what I have for you. Hey... Hey, Mr. Maitland, what are you doing with that shotgun, huh? I kept it around here for robbers. The neighborhood is full of robbers. But now the biggest robber of all is right here in front of me. Mr. Maitland, put the thing down, will you? Be careful. You're not taking the most important thing in my life, Salvador. Stop, Mr. Maitland, please. Have mercy. Please. Sorry, Salvador, I don't have that anymore. No mercy. No compassion. <laughs> just heard the incredible rise and fall of Salvador Ross, a man who pulled himself up by his own bootstraps and who finally fell before the merciless blast of a loaded shotgun, all of which goes to prove that it isn't easy to strike the right bargains in life. Sometimes we make bargains with the devil without even realizing it, and sometimes we create our own devils, the way Salvador Ross did. I'll be back.